Hi team, so today I'm going to cover Azure DevOps boards and how to get started with using this tool to manage your project and their requirements. So I've been using Azure DevOps boards for years on many of my Dynamics 3x5 and Power Platform project, and I hope that at the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of how to get started creating your project, creating your requirements, and kind of keep track on how they evolve over the project lifecycle. So first, let's explain what is Azure DevOps boards. So with Azure DevOps boards, you can effectively track your work items. So your team can create and manage work items like user stories, feature tasks, bugs, organize them into projects, which are effectively visible by the whole team. You can have Kanban boards, right? So visual boards to allow your team to see, you know, how the flow evolves, manage workflow stages and optimize effectively the delivery process. You can, of course, have backlogs, right? where all your features are prioritized by different you know, sizes, by teams, by features, and then you can classify them in iterations. You can also have sprints where the team can plan and execute on specific work items that you want to deliver in a specific period of time. And then of course, you have features like dashboards and reporting that provide you that comprehensive view of where your project is at, where each of the requirements um, are in the stages of your project. You can track metrics, project statuses, and so forth. So let's start first with creating our organization. So first we need to sign up to Azure DevOps boards. So if we navigate to the Azure DevOps board website, which we, we can start for free. And then when we sign up, we select the country where we want Azure DevOps board to be hosted and we create a new organization. So this is quite important for you to remember that an organization will be effectively a container for all your projects. So my organization got created, I can now create my first project. So you can name the project your way you want, and then you click on you know, create project. From there, you will be able to start using your project. So within your created project, if you go, for example, to work items, and you will want to create a new work item, you will see that there is only three types of work items, right? So this is usually kind of a limitation for me because I like to have additional work item types like epics, feature, user stories, and so forth. So effectively, when you create a new project for a completely new organization, it creates your project with those limited work, work item types. So basically what I would recommend you to do is you go back to, back to your organization and then you create a new project from there. And by creating a new project, a second project, you'll be able then here to select version control. I don't really, that's not really the scope of this video, but if you look here in the work item process, you can see there is the basic. That's the one that got created, that got used first when you created our first project. But effectively what I'm gonna do is select another process. And here is a, a brief explanation of all the four processes and the work item types and how they relate to. So I like usually to pick my agile process. So as you can see, the Agile process come with epics, features, user story tasks, and then you can have bugs and tasks under bugs and so forth. So that's kind of the process I use for most of my project, but feel free to experiment with any of the other ones. And then from there, I can create a new project. So once your new project is created, now the process that you have chosen, which is the Agile process, will be applied. So how do I see that? If I go to work items, I'll be able to see that I have many different other item types. So I usually create work item types directly from the backlog. So let me jump to the product backlog where from there, um, you'll see a few things. So what I recommend you to do is uh, switch on the improved kind of new boards features. So if you go to your user setting, preview features, new boards on, and then effectively that will kind of uh, preview the new, the new feature board. And effectively from there, I can create new work items, right? So if I click new work items, it by default will create a user story. What I like doing as well is making sure that, you know, here on the top right side, you have features or user stories, but basically I want to toggle as well to be able to see epics. So that's kind of an important trick here. Usually you don't see epics, it's not switched on. So switch it on if you want to use epics as well. So once I do that, 
I can now create other epics, feature or, or story. So if we start maybe with features, uh, sorry, with epics, and I create my new epic from there, which is maybe one application management, for example, and then from there, I can very quickly just that little plus button, I can create my new feature, which is applicant portal, maybe. I have my feature and from my feature, I can create my user story. Login to the portal, maybe that's my first user story. So I won't go into the details of how to structure here or how to write user stories. It's just really how to create your first work item tabs. You can see I created here kind of a first structure for my work item tabs with epic features and then user stories. So let me show you quickly here a more advanced product backlog where I have created multiple epics, which has indeed multiple features. And with it, we have multiple user stories. And even you can go one level down, you can see for some of these, we have tasks and even bugs configured, right? And for each of these on the product uh, backlog, you can configure additional columns. So those are the kind of the columns I usually use, which is the state of the item. If there are tags or any tags associated with each of the items, the effort, the business value, and who is kind of the owner of that user story feature or epic. Now back to our project, I'll create a few more items so that I can show you how I manage them using boards. So when you are creating new user stories or new item effectively, you can take advantage of what I call or what the DevOps call templates, which will pre-fill, you know, some of the fields with some previously captured information. Um, you can even tweak this whole card with additional fields, right? So stay to the end of this video because I'll be sharing, as I said, with you some tips on how to tweak the whole DevOps and make it a more enjoyable experience for you. So now that we have a few items in our product backlog, let me show you the boards, right? So another feature is boards, where you can kind of visualize on a board your work item types, right? So by default, it shows here the board for stories, user stories, but you can flip it to features and the same way you can manage kind of a board for your feature and move them you know, in kind of different stages, right? You can even see that there are five user stories uh, in that feature and, you know, zero are complete, right? So let me go back to stories and effectively the way you should use it, right? Or, or the way I've been using it is effectively those user stories are being, you know, enhanced with additional details. So you can add additional descriptions here, acceptance criteria are being populated. You can even start adding, you know, comments and tag people. So if I start adding here, new comment effectively to someone, that person will receive a comment. You can add additional details to your user story here and kind of collaborate. If I save, the comment is saving here. So that's kind of your user story card. And when that user story is kind of, has a bit additional details um, in there and start being worked on, you can kind of move it to active, right? So people are kind of, you know, starting adding details. Maybe the dev team is starting collaborating on that user story and so forth. And that's how you kind of move your user story through the different uh, stages here, right? So we go from new, active, resolve, close. You can, of course, tweak each of those states. So effectively, you have kind of a, a setting area here where you know, you can specify the different columns. Um, and again, if you stay to the end of this video, I'll share a few additional tricks for you. If that page keeps on loading, just refresh a bit your board and then it will be fine. And then effectively here, um, you know, you can also add additional fields to those cards. So if I go to this area, I can add, you know, maybe I want to add the priority field. It's enough, often an, uh, an important one. I also like to add the parent of the user story, which is the feature in this case. So if I save, you will see it's nicely reflected on the board. I can see straight away the feature that is reflected here. So this is how I would use those boards. Um, as I said, you can tweak the columns, you can change also for each of the user story, you can update the states to have them from different states. I usually have new uh, in analysis, in dev, in test. So I kind of update those states and then map them to the different columns. And again, if you want to know more still to the end, I'll be sharing additional tips and videos on how to tweak that whole board with you. So for the end of this video, let me share with you a few additional tips as promised. So a few things I also use is dashboard. So you can configure your dashboard, you know, by specific all, all of your items. You can have tiles, you can have, you know, work item types. 
uh, and you can kind of add additional kind of styles based on the data that you have in Azure DevOps board. So quite handy. Um, I don't really use Vicky much, but then in boards, you can also have what we call sprints where you can deliver item over a period of time. Query is very handy where you can create, you know, specific queries based on parameters. And then, so that's the results of the query, but then you can edit the query in the editor and kind of, you know, tweak these results to reflect maybe specific items that have a specific state or specific items that have a specific tags and so forth. So quite handy to use. Um, another tip as well is if you go now to the organization settings and go to the extensions, you can see a bunch of extensions that I have installed. Uh, I'm not using frequently all of these, but the Azure DevOps boards open in Excel, it's pretty handy. To install this one, you have to go to browse the marketplace. And then here you can find all the extension and then you find the Azure DevOps board, boards open in Excel. It will let you open items in Excel, bulk edit them and so forth. You can even import items if you want to. And if you want to learn more, I have additional videos that I have created where I go into more details. So for example, I have a video about what is the product backlog, when I use epics, feature, user stories, I have videos about customizing the whole process, adding items, changing the states. I have videos about how the states affect the board and how to make it visible on the boards. I have videos about customizing the whole Kanban boards with swim lanes, colors, tags. I have a video also about how to tweak the whole user story cards and the fields I use, and also videos about how I use tags and how to make them reflective again on the board and so forth. So don't hesitate to watch my channel and watch my playlist about Azure DevOps boards. Voila, I hope that you like this video. And if that's the case, please give me a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel. It helps me know if you are interested in content like Azure DevOps boards and if we should, I should do more videos like this one. Bye.